Hello everybody, how are you guys? Today the weather is not so hot, so I thought I would talk to you and paint from our little balcony. Before we start anything, I'd like to give a shout out to Ritu Bassetia and B underscore Trini for their portraits inspired by my video about Basquiat. These paintings are fantastic. Congrats guys and continue posting your paintings when I inspire you. Use the hashtag NGFC paint for my gig family cotton paint so I can see them. Today, let's talk about Paul Gauguin. A lot of you have asked me to study his style. Let's try and see what we can do. Gauguin is a post-impressionist from the 19th century. Just like the impressionists, he was experimenting with colors a lot and simplified the shape of his objects. But his style differs from the impressionists by the introduction of cloisonnism, from the French word cloison, which means a, a partition, a separation between the colors. This translates into a thick, dark outline around each zone of color. Especially towards the end of his life, the Tahiti years, Gauguin was painting on a very coarse burlap canvas which showed through his very thin layers of paint. So to summarize, bold colors, simplified shape, dark outlines, a rough canvas and thin layers of paint. Let's keep all this in mind when doing our portrait. I chose a nice picture of my little wifey for this and we'll be painting in acrylic with a limited palette of black, white, cobalt blue, yellow ochre and red oxide. As usual, tint your canvas. Not only it sets the mood by transparency through the layers of paint, but it also gives you better control on your color rather than harsh white background. Also, it fills the gap left between your brush strokes. You won't have a stark white dot playing peekaboo in the middle of the canvas. In this case, it also helps us simulate the rough burlap canvas used by Gauguin. I chose a dark green, roughly mixed with a bit of red oxide to do the job and applied it with a big old brush. Nothing neat about it, we want the opposite of smooth. I know you guys don't really like when I use carbon paper to report my sketches. So I did a grid this time. I scratched the main line directly on my tint layer. Remember, we are simplifying the shapes and details from the subject. Once this was done, I traced the main line with a dark blue. I could have gone a bit darker actually, as you can see, it is still pretty bright, but well, it adds to the bold colors and can be corrected later. Now, I start spreading the base color for all these sections, separated by the sketch lines. Cloisonism is a bit the same idea as the stained glass you can see on some windows. 
each color zone is outlined by a thick dark lead line. This doesn't mean there can be variation inside the color zone. Gauguin was still playing with a bit of gradients here and there, bringing texture and interest, especially to the big areas. Try to use the dark background color to start marking your shadows. A thinner paint in those areas will appear darker by transparency. Also, remember to reserve the outline for each zone. Your colors shouldn't touch each other as much as possible. Gauguin was painting wet on dry, so I advise you to wait until everything is completely dry between each step. In the complementary color to the area you are working on, suggest the shadow. Blue for the more orangey zone, green for the more reddish one, etc, etc. The idea is not to create a huge contrast, but rather to suggest where some shapes are going under some other, or where the light doesn't go. Here again, everything is done in thin layers, no big impasto. I don't know if you have seen how those Russian religious icons are painted. Maybe I'll do a video about this one day. The faces and clothes are painted in a dark color first and the highlights are added slowly from the darkest to the lightest. That's what I try to achieve here. Bright color come and give shape to your colored area in thin, diluted, successive build-ups.
Now, with a dark color, can be black, can be dark blue or red or a mix of colors, we outline our drawing using the thickness of the line to suggest the shadow or the light. A line in shadow will be thicker and somewhere hit by light will be thinner. You can start with a thin line everywhere and slowly add to this line in the areas that need it. Finally, it's time to touch up and look at the canvas as a whole. In my case, the hair and face were maybe a tad dark, so I fixed it by repeating the application of light colors in the places that needed it. You can add detail in an area that seems a bit underwork, a touch of color where the picture seems a bit dull. And here we go, we have applied Gauguin's technique to our own painting. Subscribe, like, share and post your painting with the MGFC paint hashtag for my geek family cotton paint on social media so I can see them and feature them here. See you next time and keep creating.